this is uh, my ICS 211 Introduction to Computer Science 2 class, uh, online class, and this is William Albritton. And for community building, I use the discussion and private messages part of Laulima. And um, we do two things in this class. So one thing is I try to ask uh, or I ask students uh, questions about um, their assignments, like from a bird's eye point of view. So instead of about each particular assignment, in this case, I'm asking about bugs. So a lot of times when we write programs, we get stuck with some kind of uh, bug or mistake in our program. So we got to figure out how to problem solve it and how to figure out, you know, what's going on in our program. So you know, I got several replies here from different students. And it's pretty interesting. I actually get replies that I didn't uh, think of. So it really helps uh, other students, I think, to get this bird's eye picture. And then um, helps out, too, in the long run uh, with their programming. Um, so usually student, students tend to focus more on just solving their particular program. But if they know problem solving skills for each program, they do a lot better in the class as well. Then uh, another thing we have is uh, questions for the students that the students post. And so in this case, uh, we got a lot of replies for this particular question. A lot of times it's about a certain assignment, in this case, assignment three. And I try to kind of step back and let the students discuss things for a while. And then, um, you know, sometimes I don't have to step in, but if, you know, they don't quite have uh, the right answer or, or need some more tips, uh, I try to jump in there, in there as well to the discussion. Uh, so this has been good with the community building. And then at the beginning of the class, uh, when the class first starts out, and we do have an optional assignment that I have that they, they um, talk about kind of a self-introduction for themselves. So for the communication with the students, uh, one thing I do to s communicate with the students as a group uh, every week, I uh, send a kind of a, um, what, uh, talk about what we're going to cover that week. So I send out an email to all the students. Then uh, I also have the students email me. So I have my email posted at the top here and then also on the syllabus. And so I try, uh, well, I answer email every day. Um, during the work week, and then so the turnaround is usually less than 24 hours. Um, pretty much, I have the email on all the time. So a lot of times, students will start emailing me about a particular problem they're having, and then I can get back to them pretty quickly. And then over the weekends, usually I don't answer emails, so that does does have a lag over the weekends. Also for the grades, so I try to post the grades as soon as possible. As soon as they turn one in, uh, turn an assignment, I grade it, and go ahead and post it. So they get immediate feedback um, on the grade book. And also, it, um, I, I set it up so it immediately calculates their grade. So during the semester, they always know what their grade is. And also with the, the, the grading, if you go to the syllabus, uh, you'll see that uh, they can turn an assignment as many times as they wish before the deadline. And then after the deadline, there is a, uh, a penalty, a small penalty for turning it late. But I do allow students to turn assignments up to the last day of classes. So I think it's somewhat innovative in the flexibility. Um, and that they can do an assignment, turn it in, and then get feedback on the assignment um, you know, before the due date, even. And as discussed previously, we also have the discussion of private messages I did try Blackboard for a little while for communication, but haven't had much luck with that. For the learning materials and strategies, my main uh, philosophy and uh, somewhat of innovation is just keep it simple. So. I minimize the links that I have on the Laulima page. So down to discussion and private messages, the resources, uh, the mail tool, gradebook, Blackboard, and syllabus. And then I put everything on one uh, home page. 
and by everything I mean the schedule, and you can kind of read the top here. Um, so we have the, the podcasts and the, the topic that we're covering. Uh, it's also uh, the TV dates as well there. The, the readings, so what readings that we have from the textbook, um, and then a link to the lecture, and then also a link to the assignments, the due dates, and then over here I got examples and also different resources that the students can use. Um, and the main thing is I, I, I try to have it so they can cover the material in different ways. So they can go to the podcast, they can do the readings, they can do the slides, they do the assignment. And then at the end of the class, we also have a, a final project that puts everything together. So usually they go over this, the material about six, seven times, if you include a discussion as well. Um, and so also with students with different learning styles, that gives them a chance um, to learn the material in different ways. Okay. But if you go across, I, I keep it simple. So, you know, in, in this case, say they're, you know, studying arrays. So then we have the reading, um, the lecture, uh, we have slides for the lectures, and we also have the, um, the podcasts. So we have a podcast taken at Diamond Head, apparently, um, for the students to go over the material as well. Then they click on their assignment, uh, have instructions as well, well as example output for their assignments. And then also links to different examples that the students can look at, as well as resources to um, other uh, programs and software. For the learning outcomes and assessment, uh, one thing I have is on the syllabus, of course, have the, the list of learning outcomes. And we all know that students usually don't uh, read over the syllabus too well. So at the top of the web page, I have these internal links. So uh, these are for the SLOs in the class. So if you click on the SLO, I organize the schedule or, or the table that's on the home page uh, into these different uh, SLO categories. So for example, here on recursion, um, we have a little bit on Big O, and then we, we talk a bit about recursion, or here we have some things about the object-oriented programming. At any rate, um, so each, each what, section or part of the class is organized into that particular SLO. Then I take uh, each lecture and have an assignment and, of course, examples uh, that pertain to the lecture um, that, 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 are, that, that the, the students can learn for their assignment. Um, so again, a script in the SLOs, and then each uh, each uh, what, lecture has a particular assignment that's assigned to that. And students really appreciate that. They um, like one student says they liked how the assignments directly related to whatever was discussed in the powerpoints and lectures. So it helps to keep this uh, organization. Um, also, I, I prefer to have uh, assignments and then a final project uh, at the end of the class uh, instead of like quizzes and exams. So I think the assignments really hit the higher order thinking processes. You know, you got a problem solve, you got to figure out, okay, what, why does that program not work? Uh, these are a lot higher um, thinking skills than, say, you know, studying for an exam. And, and a lot of times with exams, you know, it's, it's more testing the students on how well they do the exam instead, instead of how well they, they know their material. Um, so yeah, the focus. Again, the uh, focus on programming, so the assignments are always, are nine times out of ten assignments are about how to write a program. For the learner support, I have uh, on the first uh, lecture, the first podcast, so I do uh, talk about La Lima a bit, as well as cover the other parts of the class, uh, assignments, and how to turn those in, which is, which is by email. And so students can look at that or, or re-look at that to, to, to make sure they know how to, to use the tools and, and follow you know, the schedule on, on the La Lima. And then also, if they have any questions about La Lima, they can email me. Uh, as as soon as possible, um, 
and I try to uh, reply as soon as possible with that. Also, the ICS department, we have uh, peer mentor and also counselors um, for the ICS students. We have the Maka'ala program. And then also once a year, we have um, a counselor from UH who gives um, a presentation on transfer uh, to the UH. So we have that kind of support. And then pretty much um, if you follow the syllabus, you know, it's got everything clear, uh, clearly laid out, uh, including you know, how to submit assignments, uh, very detailed here, as well as the uh, rubric for the assignments. Uh, I have a general rubric on the syllabus as well. But for the most part, I haven't gotten too many uh, questions about how to use Laolima, um, or even we have a, a, a software uh, to run our programs that they have to download and install on their computer. I haven't gotten that many questions uh, about this, this kind of thing. Um, this is a second um, class in programming, so usually they already know how to download this kind of software, um, the integrated development environment. And also, since most are computer science majors, uh, most are pretty uh, computer savvy.